Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. My name is Moki Hino. I'm the priest in charge. Uh, these towels here at my feet are not for foot washing. Uh, we did that on Monday, Thursday. These towels are actually here for throw in the towel, which the month of May is throw in the towel month at Good Shepherd Church. The Episcopal Church women sponsor a towel drive for a cup of cold water. So if you have uh, gently used or new towels that you're willing to contribute to the cause, please bring them to church and put them in the bin here or drop them by at the office during the week. Uh, so thank you very much for that, everyone. Today is uh, Sunday, May 22nd, 2022 is the sixth Sunday of Easter. Uh, I would like to announce that we will begin a Sunday school next week. Uh, so uh, if you would like to be a teacher or feel called to be a teacher, uh, please let us know because we definitely need more people. And also, if you know children who would like to attend Sunday school, please let them know that we are beginning on June 5th, which is next week's Sunday. Uh, we are also looking for help with our coffee hour. There is a sign-up sheet sheet on the bulletin board uh, on the parish hall and I or you can let Cora Brown in the office know uh, that you're willing to help with coffee hour. There will always be coffee uh, but what we're looking for are pastries and uh, light snacks so that we can enjoy that during our fellowship time after church. So it's time to begin our service uh, with the ringing of the bell. Uh, Peter Lee, our senior warden, will ring the bell. We have a recording of him doing that. Uh, he's not with us today like he normally is because he's on the mainland attending a uh, memorial service for his brother Richard Lee who passed away from COVID-19 earlier in the year. So uh, please send your prayers to Peter. And with that, let's begin.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, highest and, and peace to his people on earth. earth. Lord God, Lord God, Heavenly King, King Almighty, Almighty God, God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have the reading of the lessons. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. We had seen the vision. We immediately trade to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the news to them. We sat sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace and following the day to the Nipolis and from there to the Philippi, Philippi which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. One Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there would be a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there, a certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, who was listening to, to us. She was from the city of Thyatira, and a dealer in a purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 67, breaking at the asterisk. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. A reading from Revelation. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain 
and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of the heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads, and there will be no more night. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After Jesus healed the son of the official in Capernaum, there was a festival of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now in Jerusalem, by the Sheep Gate, there is a pool in Hebrew called Beth Zatha, which has five porticos. In these lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I'm making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, Stand up, take your mat, and walk. At once the man was made well, and he took up his mat and began to walk. Now that day was a Sabbath, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I just want to start out by saying that I love surprises, um, especially when they come uh, in the form of moments of synchronicity that I didn't expect or that caught me off guard. So uh, here, here's what it is today, the surprise, where we're talking about the Acts of the Apostles and this lady named Lydia, who uh, was a purveyor of purple dye. But last week, we also talked about someone named Lydia, or uh, at least the bishop did. Uh, her Hawaiian name was Lili O Kalani, but her English name was Lydia. Uh, not too many people know that about, uh, about the queen, but uh, there we go. So we have uh, Lydia, who's royalty, Lydia, who's a wealthy, purveyor of purple dye, um, you know, very, very labor-intensive work uh, to, to make purple dye um, because you, you have to collect a very small sta snail and then uh, take out a duct in that snail and then use that to make the, the dye, so um, it costs a lot of money. And so if you sell it, obviously you're quite wealthy. And if you buy it, you're also quite wealthy, um, which is why uh, it is considered a royal color uh, because those were the only people who could afford it probably other than very wealthy, wealthy people. Um, and that's why uh, when they mocked Jesus as king of the Jews, what did they do? They put him in a purple cloak. Um, and now, nowadays, bishops wear purple. Um, of course, it's not expensive to produce purple nowadays, but uh, uh, if, you, if you ever wondered about that, that's, that's why, um, because it's a, it's a color of, of royalty and um, prestige and esteem and all that kind of thing. Uh, but the cool thing was, through her commercial endeavor, Lydia was able to fund the work of the church uh, by, by um, providing the funds needed in order for Paul to do his missionary work. So when you, when you think about it, it's interesting. Our commercial buildings, our land, that's our purple dye. And um, you know, how are we using it for the building up of the church? That's, that's the question that we ought to be asking. And then in addition to that, how should we be using the proceeds for the mission of the church? Um, those are really good questions. And uh, unfortunately, this human mind uh, is not able to come up with an answer for you. And so I wanna be like Paul I want to have a message from God through the Holy Spirit that says, do this like God said to him, go to Macedonia. Or like uh, God said to Joseph in a dream, don't forsake Mary, marry her, 
take the Christ child to Egypt and then later on take him back. Um, uh, those were, I submit to you, visions. Um, so how do we take our purple dye, called these commercial properties, and how do we receive a vision for what to do with them and then have the courage to enact and implement it? Uh, that all stems down to one word that we overuse in the Episcopal Church, I think, called discernment. Uh, we have to discern. The complicated thing about that is um, that we don't know how Paul discerned this vision from God. We don't know how Joseph discerned uh, the dream that he received um, from God. Uh, and we have to be very careful uh, because there's, uh, there are darker forces that can get into us and say, well, God told me to do this and um, God led me to this. Uh, how, do we, how do we know that it is of God versus um, of a less benevolent uh, force. Um, you know, I, I could say, uh, uh, hmm, I had a vision from God that said, you know, do something, and the next thing you know, um, somebody's in a grocery store in Buffalo shooting up a bunch of people. Um, so I think, I think it gets tricky, and uh, I think we have to discern with people we trust and uh, who have faith in us and in whom we have faith. Because um, otherwise we could, really, uh, we could really do some damage. So um, I wonder uh, what is, what kind of vision do you have for your life? What kind of vision do you have for uh, your work? What do, kind of vision do you have for your church? And how have you received that vision? And then how do we help you discern that vision? Um, What kind of dreams do you have when you think about your life, your career, your family, your church? Uh, what kind of images do you receive uh, when you think about your life, your career, your family, your church? What kind of um, messages do you hear uh, when you think about your life, your career, your family, your, your church? And with whom do you share those visions? Who do you trust? Um, and then what do you do with them? Um, I, I know I've had visions. I've processed them with spiritual directors. And because of that, um, I've done things like go to seminary. Um, I've done things like uh, come back to Maui to serve as at Good Shepherd Church, and now we're we're in a in an interesting predicament in a life as a church because we have all this purple dye um, in the form of our commercial properties and land, and the question isn't so much what do we what is our vision for this church, but what is God's vision for this church through us? What would God have us do? Um, and in order to figure that out, uh, we're, we're going to have to go against the system a little bit, I think, because uh, the system, and, and I dare say even the Episcopal Church system, is very heady, right? It's, uh, uh, it's got a lot of rules, it's got a lot of regulations. It's got a lot of hierarchy. Um, it bases a lot of things on academic study of church history and theology, which are necessary tools to, to move forward in mission and ministry, but 
their means to an end and not the end in and of itself. And so how can we take all of that and let it sink into the heart where the Christ light dwells so that we can receive the vision and then take it uh, with openness and faith and trust in, in people in our community. I mean, I wouldn't discern with somebody I didn't trust. Uh, and then figure out what God is calling us to do. What does God want for Good Shepherd Church? What does God hope from, now I didn't say for, but from, Good Shepherd Church and how are we going to discern that faithfully and then move forward I don't know and if I knew all these answers I wouldn't even need God so um, so I'm glad that I don't know because it's going to force me onto my knees and into prayer and maybe one of those prayers uh, will be God give me a vision the way you gave Paul a vision to go to Macedonia and encounter Lydia um, and what is that going to be for you uh, when you get down on your knees and ask God for a vision? And how are we going to share that and process it and discern that it's the will of God and then move forward? I, I, I don't know, but I'm excited to find out, just like I'm sure Paul was excited to find out why he had to go to Macedonia. And look what happened. He met a lady who used her wealth to help grow and build up the kingdom of God. And I think you and I can do the same whether we've got tons of money or if we have no money. We've just got to figure out what God's vision is for us and how we live into that vision. And I'm excited, excited, excited to explore and find that out with you. We believe in one God the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we'll pray the prayers of the people. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia. And in our diocese, St. Elizabeth's Paloma, the Reverend David Gerlach, their rector, the Reverend Imelda Padasau, assistant priest, and the Reverend Mafi Vaka Mai Lalo, licensed priest, and his wife, Mrs. Eli Sanana, Vaka Me Lalo. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we may all be one. Grant that every member of the Church, especially our fundraising committee, Ricky Melcher, Chair, may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified, 
by all people. We pray that all bishops, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Bob, our bishop, and all priests, especially Moki, our priest, and all deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Joseph, our president, David, our governor, Gil, our senator, Mike, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us this grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble that they may be delivered from their distress. Remembering especially this week, Ilalo Leo Baroiden, Cleo Betts Lee, and Winona Tomoso. Give the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. Remembering especially this week, Pachomius of Tabanisi, Junia and Andron Andronicus, and the martyrs of Sudan and South Sudan, William Hobart Hare, Thurgood Marshall, Dunstan, Alquin of York, and Lydia, of Taya Tira, we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage, we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. 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 Alleluia, alleluia.